The investigation continues into the crash of a passenger jet over Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. An ISIS affiliate has claimed responsibility for the disaster, which killed all 224 people on board. But officials are questioning those claims. CBS News aviation and transportation safety analyst Mark Rosenker joins us on the phone. So, Mark, what might bring down a metro jet of this magnitude, more than 30,000 feet in the air? What might cause it to suddenly break up in the sky and plummet to earth? Well, there are a number of things that possibly could create this catastrophic result. Uh, clearly uh, a bomb, but we're beginning with the premise that this is an accident, and this is what the, uh, the investigators are looking for. It will be fairly evident that you will be able to see if this is other than an accident, whether it was shot down by a missile, which is a very, very long shot, or uh, exploded from a bomb, which too may well be a very lo a long shot. But uh, right now, we have a history here where we have seen aircraft crash and come apart in midair as a result of after pre the aft pressure bulkhead uh, failing as a result of uh, tail strikes. And uh, we've two, two examples that come to mind were a JAL flight, which uh, was a 747, which uh, actually... Uh, uh, came apart in midair as a result of this uh, bulkhead uh, uh, problem. And also, uh, one back in 2002, a China Airlines 747 came apart in midair as a result of an improper repair of that aft pressure bulkhead, and uh, it killed everyone. So, uh, what's interesting to me is the separation of the tail section of this aircraft from the rest of the aircraft, and I think the uh, investigation. Investigators are going to look uh, very, very hard at why this uh, separation occurred. Remember, in this particular aircraft, it had a tail strike seven years ago and had been repaired. We just don't know if it was an adequate repair. Metrojet spokesperson says that its pilots are very experienced and that its fleet is well maintained. But the wife of the co pilot for this particular flight told Russia's NTV that her husband told her before the flight took off that the technical condition of the plane left much to be desired. How much weight will her words carry with investigators? Well, it's certainly going to be something which, uh, in fact, is going to be taken into account. But we're going to have a very good understanding of what really happened here when they download the information from both the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder, better known as the black boxes. That will really un, uh, un, uh, reveal significant amounts of information which will tell us exactly what happened here. We're hearing now from other airlines, Cotter Airlines, Lufthansa, Air France, Emirates, airlines say they're not flying over the Sinai Peninsula until there are more details about this plane crash. Is that a smart move in your opinion? I think out of an abundance of caution, it is something which should be done. Matter of fact, the FAA back in March indicated that it would not be prudent to fly over that area unless you were well above 26,000 feet which this plane uh, was apparently more than 30,000 feet, as I said. Uh, so we wait and find out what investigators can come up with. Mark Rosenker, thank you for your time. You bet.